This is the Japanese Nambu Type 14 pistol. The designation comes from its adoption in the Imperial Taisho Year 14, or 1925 in the Gregorian calendar. It was developed by Japanese arms designer Kijito Nambu. While the history of this handgun is worthy of more time, this video will simply explain how it works. To ready the handgun, simply load the 8 round detachable magazine into the grip. Pull back on the cocking piece located at the rear and release. This chambers the first 8x22mm cartridge. Take aim, and a squeeze of the trigger will lift the sear, which in turn lifts the front of the trigger bar. Situated like a teeter-totter, the rear of the trigger bar will now lower. This releases the striker. The firing pin strikes the cartridge's primer, discharging the pistol. Being a short recoil pistol, the Type 14's barrel extension and bolt are locked when the pistol is discharged. They travel a short distance together before unlocking, freeing the bolt just as the barrel is halted by striking the inside of the frame. The bolt then travels rearward on its own, with the attached extractor stripping the spent cartridge from the chamber and pulling it into the ejector, flicking it from the action. Two recoil springs, set on either side of the bolt, were compressed during this rearward stroke. They will now return the bolt forward, which in turn strikes the barrel extension and drives it forward, resetting the action. Back to that lockup. A T-shaped block hinged to the barrel extension holds the bolt in place. When in the up position, this locking block sits in a notch in the underside of the bolt and prevents it from moving without the barrel extension. We'll fire the pistol again. As the barrel extension travels rearward, the block is given room to fall, and further pushed by a coil spring set underneath it. This releases the bolt to travel rearward independently. On the return stroke, an extension on the lock strikes the inside of the frame behind the magwell. This tips the lock back up. A manual safety on the left side of the frame must be operated by the free hand. When set to safe, its thick cross pin prevents the trigger bar from rising and therefore locks up the pistol. Turned to fire, a notch in the cross pin allows the trigger bar to travel, and the pistol to discharge. During recoil, a notch in the barrel extension strikes the sear, tipping it off of the trigger bar and resetting the action, preventing fully automatic fire. This is also a good time to see the striker being pulled behind the trigger bar by the bolt. On the return stroke, it catches on the trigger bar, leaving the pistol cocked. Again. Watch the sear attached to the top of the trigger as it is reset. The Type 14's mag release button was, at first, the only thing retaining the magazine. Apparently this rapid and easy release was a drawback, as magazines were being damaged or lost on the battlefield. So a magazine retention spring was attached to the lower front of the grip. The Japanese army also demanded a magazine safety. This coil spring powered tipping block has a finger like extension that rests behind the trigger, preventing it from being pulled. When the magazine is returned to the pistol, its body rotates the safety out of the path of the trigger. All right, let's clear the rest of the rounds. Bang. 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 Finally, when emptied, the follower will rise and block the path of the bolt. This leaves the action locked open and signals for a reload. There is no hold open lever, so the magazine must be pulled from the pistol against the spring weight on the bolt. The action will then snap shut. There's a lot of history in the Nambu Type 14, and it is often mocked, mostly due to its weak cartridge, poor striker strength, and perceived relationship with the later Type 94. But overall, it is a strong pistol considering a complete lack of competition in the region. Simply compare it to any other native East Asian pistols of World War II or before, if you can find another. More importantly, for modern collectors, it's extremely unique. More about this pistol and others can be found in the links provided in the description. Thanks for watching.